Hello, 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 guys, and welcome back to a One Piece Burning Blood video. My name is Silva Koji, or Silva Kiji, and welcome to the Zone Gaming Go. Most people actually call me Silvo, though, so you can actually call me that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Now, we are going to be talking about a really good subject today. This is going to be a tactical analysis video, and this is something that people have been asking me to do for the longest. But due to March Madness coming up, which is going to be the biggest tournament we've ever done, the eight-man tournament going to be happening in February, as well as the final invitational, bringing in all the first and second place winners of the previous invitationals, I'm going to go ahead and give you a lesson or analysis based on picking a team, types of characters, and basically that's really it. Okay. So let's talk about the three types of characters before we get into anything else. So there are three types of characters in this game or in any team or the game. You're looking at Skullgirls, you're looking at uh, Marvel's Capcom 3, you're looking at Marvel's Capcom Infinite. Maybe not Dragon Ball Fighters, actually. That, that's, a little, that's a little bit weird. I don't know. Not about that one. So three types of characters. We're looking at uh, Point, Guard, and Anchor. Now, Guard is not in any of the other games, something I just made up completely myself. So I'm going to have to explain that to you in detail exactly what that means. So when you're making a team in One Piece Burning Blood, you're thinking about those three categories there, okay? The point character is the person who actually starts off the battle. Um, that character is very important at the beginning because they have different, um, you know, options in front. Like, we talked about this with me and Rohawk in uh, different videos. Now, there's Kuma, there's Garp, there's Blackbeard. Excellent starter character at the beginning, but generally, sometimes point characters can turn into your anchors, but your position really doesn't matter unless it's the beginning of the game, or unless you're fighting against a Blackbeard or Aki Inu or a uh, Kuma. Okay, so now we're moving on to the guard. So the guard type character is what I like to call the versatile character. He's the guy who basically stops the um, opponent from taking over your disadvantages. He's the guy who's like, okay, you want to be a ranged character, I'm a character that gets in close. That sort of people. Now, in all cases, we mentioned before that sometimes a guard can be an anchor and that can be a guard, but this is like how you specifically put the character. Now, this is how you, as a player, interpret the character you selected. Your opponent can interpret it however you want, but if you think that this guy's gonna be my guard type, Go for it, or Midgard. Now it's the anchor. The anchor type character is the person who carries the game for you at the very end. Usually this is the last person to be alive in a 1v1 situation, and this is mainly because you try your best for this character not to die. The characters in this category can fit like Shanks, can be, um, it can be even, even like Burgess, honestly. It can be Burgess, it can be Mihawk, it can be uh, Whitebeard, anybody with very strong um, ultimate combo potential, uh, somebody with one hits, um, like Sabo and Zoro, stuff like that. So it can be any of those characters. Now, Anchor versus Anchor fight is not ideal in most cases, depending on who you're fighting, because yeah, you can sure like, oh, my anchor can beat your anchor. And it's like, okay, that's cool. But can your anchor beat my point? And that's what, we have to get, that's what gets confusing. Certain anchor type characters like Shanks don't really want to come out as much because they're slow status. So usually they kind of sit in the back until it's time to relax and enter the battle at the end. Okay, so now we define the, the three characters about point, starters, your, your guard is your um, advantage or disadvantage giveaway or take or whatever and your <laughs> and your anger gap character is your comeback king let's talk about the four different maps that i've created there are four maps in my ideal um of one piece running blood and these four maps are basically like building your team basically okay so i got all these characters mapped out or all these teams mapped out here so we're gonna go with the first one so the first map is your balanced map this contains your point guard and anchor so your classic three characters a good example of that will be kuski's uh buggy sanji and boa hancock along with Beepo, johnny and elder nuan or neon whatever her name is so basically it's a balanced out thing you got three characters you got three support basically um and it goes from how buggy points as the character being able to have guard breaks um that uh was called using the big top grab as well as being able to get past sword attacks means that at the beginning he's going to be hard to deal with depending on who your character who your opponent is coming out with at the beginning if you have a big character coming out that's going to be all ends oh god bug is going to have a fun time with that and then he has heels over here he has sanji and bone hancock back him up bone hancock has the combos sanji and, and buggy can link with each other easily buggy and bone hancock can link with each other but it's just really just two of them not all three really so it so when it comes to map number one, it's about using your team, your your whole tie versatile team. They don't necessarily have to be together, but they can kind of like do what they want from what Kuzi says. So another thing too is that this could be interpreted in many ways. So um, despite me saying it over here that he doesn't have to use everybody in combos, he can he can do it if he wants to. It's an option. But based on the playstyle your opponent is using, you need to determine when you're looking at that when you look at that team how they're using the team. What what type of map are they using? Utilize so you can dissect it and get rid of certain characters. Like on this team, you get rid of Buggy, you still have two characters to worry about. Get rid of Sanji, you still have two characters to worry about. Either way, uh, Kuski has a game plan 
And um, same thing with other players that use the, the map number one. They have a game plan. So getting with a run character is not going to severely mess them up because they have a certain rhythm. Because you're looking right here, we see Buggy as the point. Um, Sanji can actually work towards the anchor, even though despite being in the middle. And Boa Hancock works well as the guard because she has Conqueror's Hockey. And she can easily um, get rid of uh, Loki type characters as well as do tremendous amounts of damage. So she can actually work as the anchor and the um the guard if she wanted to while sanji can sort of work as the anchor but he has that position taken away if your opponent has the female on their team so if the female is on the opponent's team he kind of bowen hancock becomes the guard at that point and um well no bowen hancock becomes the anchor at that point my bad damn i messed up again bowen hancock does become the guard and Sanji becomes the <laughs> You know, I just messed myself up. Let me remind myself. Okay, so when there is a female on the team, Sanji is no longer the anchor because he cannot carry no more. That female is there. So unless that female gets defeated, he is going to be left as being the guard. Now, while Boa Hancock technically, it's kind of it's kind of weird how this works out. So Boa Hancock is the guard against the female. And then Sanji kind of loses all status. I guess that makes sense. That's a better way to explain it. Yeah, that's a better way to explain it. I, I love that way. Okay. While the support kind of help with Bipo and um, Johnny Osako as well in Neon. Okay, moving on to map number two. Map number two is what I like to call the Unity map. The Unity map is pretty unique as it utilizes all three characters. And I guess one person popped up through your head as soon as I said that. Let's bring him up. Shaheem uses Garp, Zoro, Akiti with support, Killer, and Johnny. Basically, this team is the pure definition of I'm going to kill you and there's nothing you can do about it. So with uh, Garp starting combos, Zoro doing a little, you know, 3,000 worlds, and then, no, 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 wait, wait. Garp starting combos, Akiji doing ice ball, Zoro 3,000 worlds, your character is okay dead. And there's a lot of teams like this. There's a lot of teams that do tremendous damage like this, but usually it revolves around using all three characters. And that's what I like to call Unity. Now, the difference between a Unity team and a map number one is that map number one utilizes the key characters individually and doesn't really focus on trying to use that you know, they, they can't really branch damage out as much because it's not as worthwhile, basically. But with characters with a stun, characters with um, easy access at the beginning, they can do it. Like, easily, like, Buggy can sub for Garp easily for this team because all he has to do is heavy Garp break, which does more damage, and you can get more out of it, basically. But um, in this case, it's just easy access for Garp to use his uh, special movement if it's fluff. Now, there's many different Unity teams. I've seen a plenty of others that do involve Buggy and Marco. Uh, Whitebeard is also part of a lot of Unity teams. Um, the weakness of these teams is that if you're if you see that your opponent is using the team as a map number two Then you can get rid of the core and stop the whole thing like once uh, Akiji is out of here the team is shut down in a sort of way I mean like you have Garp and Zoro, but when it comes to like their um, Their synergy with each other. It's not as much as you would you know hope So um, it's like when you look at the unity team look at the core look at where you need to go and just get rid of it now, also, uh, when it comes to point guard and anchor, this team is really weird because it might not necessarily have the basic types. It can it can vary basically on this category because I can see Garp as being a point and an anchor um, and a guard. I can see Akiji as being an anchor and a, um, and a point. And I can see Zoro as basically being a point. So it's just like they can just switch out as much as they want to, kind of back it up and uh, just, I don't just hang out. It's just weird. Unities are always are flexible like that. Okay, so moving on here to the map number three. Now, this is an example of a team that I actually played with a lot. Um, this is Team Black as Night. Um, basically, um, what a map number three is that anything that revolves around using two or more active support. Now, this doesn't mean you have to specifically click the support. This can be a support that um, activates on its own, like Dragon or something like that, or uh, Dory and Brogy. So, what this um, entitles as the team you selected is purely defined by how their support move. It's called, it's, it can be considered support reliant, but that's just how the team is built, right? There's no there's no um, downside, <laughs> that's not true. There's no, how can I say this? Mm, there is no regret in using support oriented teams unless you get shut down super early without using them. There's nothing you should feel ashamed about when you support the teams. Even if your opponent is like, oh, you use support, don't don't give a shit. Just say, screw you, don't care. Do what you want to do. Okay, example of this was using Vista support, Lafetti, 
and Kairos. These are actually three active support, actually, because uh, Vista uh, gives you, so prevents you from getting all knockback effects or stun effects, which works really well against 100% uh, teams. Cause you gotta remember, it says stun effects. So you're good. Okay, you got Lafetti here that has the HP, that's for Rick Mariah, and you have Kairos, which gives you plus two. Now, you see Sanji's passability is already giving you plus one. You get plus two after um, Perona and uh, Gekko died, you have plus five. Plus five freaking Sanji is incredibly strong. Now, take in mind, remember I told you before, is that Gar is supposed to be able to get rid of disadvantages. Um, that's kind of where Perona actually comes in. Perona is a point character as well, can be a guard character. Don't you ever say anchor. Ooh, no, but okay. <clears throat> Cause she can remove burning gauge, she can remove uh, ability gauge. Perona, when added to a team, shuts your opponent down so hard. She can work as a point in a guard at the same time. She can be fighting against a character that completely outclasses her in damage, but they're struggling because she doesn't give a shit. That's just how Perona is. Gekka Mariah, the same boat here with his range combat, can also be a guard character. Um, and his his category falls around long range combat can shut down most of the so-called top tier characters in the game with his range combat. And so this is where you kind of get it. You got these two characters here that sh are shutting down your opponent, and then your last character, which is Sanji, is going to be doing the most damage. Now, even if those two characters die, because once Gecko and Perona die, and they will die most likely, your opponent is like at their knees. They don't have shit. They probably have like low HP. They got chipped to death. And Sanji's like, oh, all I gotta do is combo each one of you one time. That's what a support oriented team. Is, is about support oriented teams are about using your support in conjunction with your characters in a way that will make it seem like support reliant but also your opponent will like know what to do so if your opponent tells you you only won because support you're doing a fabulous job you are awesome you were doing the right way that is how you use map number three complaints are actually in size of encouragement okay so map number four this is one of my least favorites i hate this map is all in. All in is when your opponent uses all characters from 3K, doesn't give a shit what about the sport, and kind of bring them all in. Now this is this right here is called all in because literally there is no room for error. Okay, you don't have support to back you up. You don't have um, any special weird effects to back you up. Most of the characters that are 3K do not have anything like super, except probably Blackbeard. You know what I mean? Like um. Like something's out of the ordinary, like how Perona has the hollow balls and how um, how Smoker does the, well, yeah, the Smoker 3K, never mind. Well, yeah, whatever. So basically it's like these characters, they, they have a specific game plan, you know what they're gonna do. Um, there's, there's not really much they can do, um, but you can, I guess, beat it. Now, in some cases, um, uh, all ends can work as unities because of you know, Conqueror's Hockey and everything. Um, so you had to look out for that. But most of the time, um, these characters, if the opponent is playing against these characters, they know what they're doing. Because that means that they have no margin for error. If they mess up and lose a character, they lost a the character. There's no, oh, maybe, well, this, well, even though I lost a character, I can still, no. No, there is, they lost a the character. It's, they have to basically make two of their characters work at least 1.5 times as much because of that fact. That's what All In means. All In is basically saying that you're doing, you're playing these three characters and you're gonna try your best. <laughs> and if your opponent is running like a support oriented team, that's like, that's like the, basically the pinnacle of your, I guess, depression at that point. Because as a All In team or All, all, all In player, you're gonna be worried about some support because you have to worry about the support, you have to. Because you're not just looking at three characters, you're not thinking about, okay, well he has this support, well I have this. You can't look at that, you're looking at your characters and how, what you're gonna do in the situation. So if you're finding all in support, all in um, team, you might wanna kill them as fast as possible because if you do not, you will get it destroyed. Okay, so that is pretty much it for building a team and kind of my information about not, about um, point anchors and guards. I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at least learned something from the video. I know I talked a lot from this video and I know I'm saying video a lot, but I am glad to be back. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the, uh, the Zone Game & Go content and also, as always, enjoy playing One Piece Burning Blood.